Okay, good morning everyone. So, I would like to go through PowerPoint, something that we have gone through in class. And this is the chapter one. <clears throat> okay, so introduction to media elements. Okay, five media elements that you need to know. They are graphics, animation, sound, text, and video. All these can be placed into a PowerPoint so as to increase the interactivity with the audience. Okay, so uh, when we want to remember this, we use the acronym Guest TV. Okay, so multimedia content uses a combination of two or more types of media elements. Advantages of using media elements, they are Okay, to enhance user experience, to make it more appealing compared to just text-only materials because there is now animation, and video, and sound, and images. Okay, so more appealing. Help users understand the content easily. Okay, these are the three benefits or advantages of using multimedia content. Okay, multimedia is found in schools, shopping centers, at work, and at home. Okay, the examples of how it's being used in the teacher's presentation, you can see on the, in the photo on your right, as well as the information kiosk in shopping centers. Okay, so you often see this in uh, big shopping centers like even Jam, uh, or um, when it comes to tourist attractions like the Changi Airport. Okay, or in Orchard Road. Okay, next. I'll now go through chapter 2. Okay. So chapter 2 talks a bit more about interactive use of multimedia. Okay, so when it comes to interactivity, for user, how can they um, communicate with the devices? Okay, so there's always the touch screen. Touch screen. Okay, so touch control. Using our voice to activate voice recognition. Gesture recognition is like um, those games, we game set that you um, ever encounter before, I hope. Okay, so where you can just use, or, or even VR headsets, okay, where you can just use your fingers and you can point and VR, okay? So as you can see, VR is where the student is wearing a headset, okay? So these are the four ways where we can interact with the device. For the applications, we can apply the use of interactive um, PowerPoint slides in an automat automated teller machine, ATM machine, where you redraw cash, a digital shopping directory in the shopping center at the supermarket where we self-checkout um, our purchases. Okay, so it's called self-checkout kiosk. During e-learning where we um, use an online website to learn, computer or video games, simulation training, for example, when a pilot wants to learn how to fly a plane, so he will not immediately go to a real plane, right? So you have to use a room and machines and VR to have training. Okay, so it's called simulation training. Okay. All right, in an interactive presentation like PowerPoint, users can select the content that you want by clicking on navigation buttons. Okay, how to... Place your navigation buttons. These are the steps in PowerPoint. Highlight the text that or object that you want to hyperlink. Then right-click and select hyperlink. And you will see this window. Okay, this window, you will, if it's a link to the same PowerPoint, you will put it place in this document and you choose the, power, the slide that you want and press OK. Okay, so we'll see more later on in Chapter 3. 
Okay, chapter 3 talks about designing slide presentation. You will later you will see the navigation buttons. What is the purpose of the presentation? Who is the audience? And which media elements do you want to use from Guest TV? Okay, so consider these questions before you create a slide presentation. Okay, so before you even create the PowerPoint, you should plan a storyboard first. So a storyboard is like doodling from one page to another to show us what's your plan uh, that will allow your PowerPoint to flow from one idea to another. Okay, so storyboards allow us to plan the flow or sequence of the content as well as how you're going to lay out the media elements Okay, in every slide. How to enhance readability? How to make it? Uh, how to make your PowerPoint slides easy to read? Okay, so we should choose suitable, okay, suitable font types, font size, and font styles. Okay, these three will allow us to enhance readability. So we normally choose sans serifs fonts. Those fonts do not have extra tails like Arial. Okay, font type. Okay, so headings must be larger than the body text. Okay, next to ensure sufficient white space so that the page does not look cluttered, you should actually adjust the media element sizes. Okay, you shouldn't have the text so huge that it covers the whole space as well as all the images. Uh, there are so many in one slide that it makes it the slide look very cluttered. Okay, you should avoid that. You should always aim to increase white space. Okay. Now you should have high contrast between the lightest color and the darkest color. Okay, it should be the most different. So the highest contrast that you can get is this white background with black text as you are seeing now. Okay. To use images to make the slides more interesting, okay, to capture the audience attention. Okay, you know that images, pictures are very Im impactful. Okay, use no more than six lines of text. It depends. Okay, I'm sure um, if it's something very difficult to understand, you will want to make less text in one slide. Okay, but if it's in point form, um, then and a suitable font size, I think if you have eight lines, okay, it's still okay. All right, so also use less colors. Okay, so if you need to, you may want to bow some important words to attract the users or audience attention to the important words, okay, by using bow or a different color. So you avoid using things like four or five colors, okay, so as not to make your slides very distracting. All right, so now I'm at the last chapter, which is the last part of the learning today. Okay, so let's recap the last part, which is on still on designing slide presentations. Okay, so that remember I mentioned about the presentations having a slide layout. Okay, this is title slide is very often used for the first slide and the title and content slide is the second most used okay now sorry avoid uh, uh ignore the bell okay so the templates are given in the powerpoint but you can don't use them if you want if you are in a rush for time okay repeating media elements is good so as not to distract the users Okay, these are actually navigation buttons, as you can see here. Slide Master is used to get a consistent design. So, it is very often used for a logo graphic or even uh, words that you want to, or uh, font type or font size or font color that you want to maintain consistent throughout. Okay, so this is the method to go to Slide Master, go to View, Okay, first, then Slide Master. And go and edit the title slide or the title and content slide. Okay, so the outcome would be every slide will have the same, that uses the same template will have the same layout and colors, as well as the same pictures, okay, that you can't remove when you start to edit your slides. 
Okay, these are the navigation buttons that we missed seeing just now. The before, next slide, previous slide and the home button, okay, which is not shown here. This is for the sound, this is for the video. Okay, so the user can click to um, choose what they want to read or hear or see. Okay, so action buttons, you just use the insert shapes and go to action buttons. Alright, I've come to the end of the um, today's uh, lesson. Okay, it's just a recap for most of you, but something new for some of you. So you can watch this video by uh, going to the exact um, information that you want by scrolling up and down the video. Okay, so I hope that you can use this information to do the work later, which is the PDF, okay? And please submit the PDF um, before 10 p.m. today. Thank you.